welcome, Alicia McLeod. Hi, thank you everybody for having me here. You know, before, I don't even know, there she is. I gotta, before I even start, I have to tell you how impressed I am by Gabby. You know, I, when I walked in, thank you, please give her a round of applause. You know, I walked in and I saw Gabby and she has been so helpful and I wish that she would come to my house and talk to my little girls to tell them how awesome to be and she would come and teach me how to be a photographer too. Yep. Right? Yep. <laughs> so thank you. So listen, when Tracy called me and she said, Alexia, can you come and speak to my group and can you come empower? And I said, you told me there was a group of ladies here and you're talking about empowerment? Listen, that's all you have to say because I feel empowered already. Okay? So I want you to do me a favor, please, if you would, if you would look to the left of you and look to the right of you, look at everybody who you see in this room. Okay? Look around at all the people that you see because everyone that you see here is a vision carrier and a vision keeper. You all are history makers in this place. You are. And you can tell that I am not the typical therapist, okay, because I come to bring the noise. Woo! All right? Woo! We come to bring the noise because everyone in here, we have all gone through something. You know, whether you're a provider, and I've learned this word, or a provider, we have gone through something. And the fact is that it's not about what you've gone through, but how you get over it, how you get through it. Yeah. And now today what we're gonna talk about is we're gonna talk about getting through it, if that's all right. Is that okay? <laughs> all right, so you know, a lot of people look at you and they have no clue what you've done to get through your journey. And there's so much success in this room and there's so much beauty, I should say, and success. And really, the true success is in your journey. It's everything that you've gone through, the mountains that you've climbed, the battles that you've fought. And I should have brought in my pink gloves because truly, the battles that you fought to get right here where you deserve to be. Because you've gone through some stuff. Many times people look at, they look at your pictures on Facebook, right? Everything that you got on Twitter, right? They see you walking with a smile because we always put on the face because we are, you know, as women, and the men that we see in here that are supporting people, okay, so I give it to you too, right? <laughs> we, are, we are supporters, so we put on that great face and people just, they, they love us for who they think we are and they hate us for who they think we are. If you get where I'm coming from. Do you get where I'm coming from? The fact is that we have to be able to really become in tune with who we are. We have to know who we are, become in tune who, with what we are and understand that things happen during life. And as a psychotherapist, I've been practicing, listen, as good as I look in my yellow dress. <laughs> like a canary, baby, like a canary, right? I come, I, I wear this because I want to, I want to bring light and shine wherever I go. So I love my bright colors. So I, <laughs> listen, Tracy, like, I bring the noise, I told you I bring the noise, right? I, when people come to me in these 20 years, I love that you, you mentioned a word that people mentioned to you, right? It's always consistent. They say, Alexia, I don't understand. I did all these things right in my life. I worked on karma, on faith. I was good. I was good to my husband. Why is he doing this to me? I don't understand my kids. I love them. I love them so hard. I don't even understand why this is happening to me. I died. I trained all my life. Why can't I lose these five pounds? Right? My health, I never smoked. Why? Why? I'm a therapist. You know, life is hard. And sometimes it is erratic. And all the answers don't come just here. They don't just come. So again, I'm gonna tell you that we're gonna talk about breaking through what you're going through. All right? So, there's so many things in life that happen. Tracy ain't give me no clip, so I gotta come walk all the way back here. Right? <laughs> 
So, you know, in order to really talk about what we're going through, I believe that we have to walk through what we go through. You know, my favorite saying, and Tracy knows this well, I say we gotta feel it before we heal it. What is a trauma? We gotta identify what a trauma is in our life. And trauma hits us in so many different ways. In my own life, you know, trauma hit me years ago. Thought my life was good. Lived, raised by two great parents. Family of four, vacationed a lot. Everything was great. And got married. Didn't work out so well. It ended in a way that was so traumatic that it was broken and I was left with nothing. For some, they would be able to recover quickly. For others, not so much. Trauma. I had a baby girl. I had police. I had abuse. Who, me? A therapist. A therapist that was ashamed and confused and not even knowing. How can I go home to my parents? How can I tell people? You're hiding, you don't know. Trauma. How do you deal with something like that? What do I say, what do I do? You know, when we look up trauma, what is a traumatic event? It's something that shakes you to the core. It doesn't just affect you, but it affects the people that are around you. And usually when we think about a trauma, we think about it so individually. We think about it as something that is going to affect you and not necessarily the other people that it touches. You know, when it's us at times, when it hits us, when it's us individually, there's times that we say, we're doing this for our kids, but that's still us. You know, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to really challenge you today to step outside of yourself to say, guess what about me? What about me? How am I going to do this? Because if it's not, if I'm not looking after me, I cannot look after them. I can't. It's like, it's like putting on that mask first. One of the definitions here says traumatic events affect survivors, rescue workers, and friends, relatives of victims who have been directly involved. They may also affect people who have witnessed the event either firsthand or on television. How much things have we seen on television in this past month? Yeah, lots. You know, I, from kids on up, it has affected us. It has made us afraid to send our kids to school. It has made us afraid to sometimes walk the streets, to go running. Traumatic events. I'm good for stories, so I have to tell you one. I'm gonna call this patient Lisa. Lisa came to me because she was pregnant and giving up her child for, I say gifting her child for adoption. Her father had just passed away from cancer. She was raised in a beautiful home, father, pastor, mother, homemaker. During the period of time when she was very, when I say it was probably one of the most successful adoptions I had ever done, because she had just really resigned herself that this was a decision that she had to make because this child was not really for her. It was not the correct time for her. It was not, but she had chosen the perfect parents that were gonna raise her child. During this time, her mother was diagnosed with stage four cancer. Her mother, unsure of whether or not she wanted to tell her daughter, had everything going through her mind. In her mind was going every, every fear of when her husband went through. What am I gonna say? How am I gonna do? How can I deal with leaving another child? The fears, the anxieties. Even before she knew the outcome, it was already set up in her head. You know, how many times in our lives do we have what we call anticipatory grief in our head of what the outcome is going to be? I want for you to think about how many times, not just anticipatory grief, but have you walked through it and made decisions without really thinking it through? 
right? Has that affected your, your decision? And went through this, but the picture's not. So the stages of grief. You know, in denial, denial is one of the first stages that we go through. If we're talking about a diagnosis, in denial, well, for denial, when somebody, if your doctor has come to you and given you a diagnosis, it's one of nature's you know, great ways of being able to cushion you from everything else that's going on. You know, for anyone that has been given uh, news that they would not particularly like, whether it's a diagnosis, whether it's a breakup, whether it's your child telling you something's going on, many times we're like, it's not really happening. And really and truly, it assists you on going on to the next step to be able to handle the fact to say, okay, well, you know, what are we going to do next? This next step is really gonna help for the professionals to understand, and really, a big part of me being here as a professional, I treat a lot of professionals. And I think that it's so imperative for professionals to be able to chat together and to be able to seek the appropriate help as well too because we bear the weight of so much that is going on. Because hearing the stories and caring, being the care, because we are the caregivers, and being able to separate the two when we go home is a lot. And a lot of caregivers, guess what? We have our own diagnoses and our own traumas as well too. So how do you separate the two? Understanding the protests that our, pa that our patients give. Sometimes we don't understand. We don't understand why is this patient acting like this? I'm only trying to help them. Why are they so angry? <laughs> why are they so pissed off? They just got told, I just told them they got cancer. What, you know, why are they so mad? You know? They blame, you know, God, we, I should say, you know, all of a sudden when we had so much faith, you know, the protest moves to like blaming God, blaming, you know, for allowing this to happen. When we believed in faith so strongly, blaming ourselves for our body turning against us, blaming our family for giving us this shitty dream. Sorry for saying a bad word, but it's the truth. You know, this is, I, Hold on, I'm sorry, Gabby, I'm sorry I said it bad. Okay. <laughs> but it's, you know, all of this is, all of this is, is reality that everything comes down, that we start to really, we're mad. Disorientation is another natural process. Detachment. If all of this is happening, what do I do next? Nobody's gonna understand anyway. And then you hope to get to a phase of resolution. Patterns, I'm big on talking about patterns. Patterns that block the vision to the next step. Fear, anxiety, judgment, avoidance. Now fear, that's easy. Fear comes about easily. When we hear something that we don't like, the easiest, the easiest thing to come about is fear. Anxiety starts to stir up within us. Judgment is something that I really want to discuss because it's something that, you know, we think of others judging us, but what about you judging yourself? I think that that is probably the biggest thing that I hear is, and really have to assist people in getting to terms with, is them judging themselves even more than other people are looking at them. And accepting what is going on and moving on to the next step, getting to the resolution phase. And as caregivers and as providers as well, you know, getting to an acceptance stage and really finding some resolution. These are common responses, co uh, cognitive, emotional, physical, behavioral, for, for like time, I'm gonna kind of just go past that one. I told Tracy that I don't really go through all of this. I want to, <laughs> I want to for the sake of time, it, it's really important for me to give you one great story because I'm, again, good for stories. Now, Tracy and I met 
some time ago. <laughs> we, just, we just decided it was about a year ago, right? And it was just, it was really kismet when we met. I think she kind of told me a story because I don't really think you knew Stacey as well as you thought you knew her. She, yeah, she, she kind of told me a fib. She, no, she, she did. <laughs> she, she called me out of the blue. And there's many times I don't have time to, to really meet with a lot of people. Um, she, I'm sure. But she called me and she got me on the phone and she said, Alexi, you know, I know Stacy, who is a friend of mine, who she's an exec for uh, iHeartRadio. So I said, oh my gosh, that's a great friend of mine. So we made plans to go for lunch. And I met her, was it the same day? That never happens. It never happens. And I ended up, I think even before I met her, I, call, I called Stacy, and Stacy says, yeah, I think I met her. So I'm thinking, okay, I guess they don't know each other that well, but I'm still gonna go. We ended up having one of the best lunches, I think, that we had, because that I've had in so long, and it was just kismet. I ended up hearing her story, her story, her survivor story, which was so, it touched my heart so much. And it will tell you how some, some things are just so meant to be. That there's this young lady that is so strong that after giving birth, had her own cancer story and that went through so much and that lives for her kids and lives to be able to speak her truth to other people. It says so much for the things that she does. And just as all of you, you know, I want you to really realize how much that you give to other people on a daily basis. And even when, as you reach out in helping others, you know, as she thought that I was gonna help her, really she helped me. Because that same year, as she's telling me her story and we're building a friendship and everything else and she's thinking I'm helping her, I had two family members, my father and an aunt, that were diagnosed with cancer. And as we're going through these whole steps, even just her strength and her friendship and the way how karma goes, the strength of this one woman helped me to get through so much more than she could have ever imagined. And what you all do on a daily basis helps so much. So continue to see clearly, recognize what you do, and to break through whatever patterns that you have, because you are amazing. Thank you so much for having me.